rip that spine out! That was close! Banaza got summoned from his world Kingdom of Paluma to another world. To be exact, he got summoned to the magical kingdom of Clyrode. He got summoned as a hero candidate, but insisted on not being one since he was a merchant in his previous world. His statistics were therefore those of an average citizen, as he had stated. The wizards, shocked to learn that he was an unsuccessful hero candidate, desired to return him to his former realm. The blonde hero, a man with stats similar to those of a true hero, was summoned, interrupting the magicians. The king hosted a feast for the new hero as a way to honor the new hope for the kingdom. Banaza made an effort to make contact with maids and other royal palace staff members during the feast in an attempt to help him return. Finally, after the banquet was finished, he got a chance to talk to a maid. Unluckily, sending someone back to his original world is only possible. If the gate is still open, but due to the banquet, him not being able to talk to anybody, this gate got closed, and thus he was not able to go back to his world. The king apologized and admitted this grave mistake, and thus he permitted him to live in this realm. He sent Banaza to the Delaveza forest, where he could live from now on. The trip to the forest took him 20 days. He was very surprised that the king would make a slave contract with a demi-human just to bring him to the forest, but his surprise, in this world there does not exist such things as slave contracts like in his previous world. In this world, humans and demi-humans coexist. After arriving in the forest, he uses his magic bag that he received to kill a small slime. Shortly after, he gets a notification on his status window stating that he has leveled up to level two, gaining all of the magic skills and changing all of his abilities too, meaning they became infinite. Essentially, he became OPF. Because he was so strong, his magic abilities sensed that his bottomless bag, which he obtained from the king, was infused with hidden magic and was emitting monster-luring magic, location-tracking magic, and forced recovery magic. As a result, he used one of his abilities to remove the curses on the bag. Entering the forest, he got automatically warned since the forest was covered with a high concentration of malicious, which deals fatal damage to human beings. He used purification magic to get rid of the severe magic in the whole forest. Since purification is the most effective magic against demons, he killed every single demon inside the forest, thus leveled up to level 367. But due to him not realizing that he killed a bunch of demons, he thinks that his levels get up if he only uses his magic. He isn't even realizing that the symbol means that all his stats are infinite. Instead, he thinks that he is so weak that the skill board won't show him any numbers. He decided to completely start over in this new world and to earn some money, thus to not get recognized. He changes his appearance with a skill of his, shape-shifting magic. After teleporting to the castle town of Clyrode with teleportation magic, he registers himself in an adventurer's guild, and he also changes his name to Fleo. While unable to decide which quest to accept, he got approached by a female demi-human child who asked him to escort her to the Delaveza forest. Surprised about this job, he agreed to escort her since he could use teleportation magic. He was suddenly stopped by four female knights, which threatened him to leave this girl since he wouldn't be able to accomplish the task. The four knights didn't believe him, saying that he could use teleportation since it is high-ranking magic that only a few magi can use, and thus they assumed that he was after the body of the girl. Fleo proposed to the knights to come with him so that he could show them that he is speaking the truth. He teleported him and the others to the Delaveza forest, and they were shocked that he really could use such high-ranking magic. They even began questioning his identity. Suddenly, the knights gather around the girl. The demi-human girl turned out to be a lupine demon and tried to attack all of them after she turned into her original form, which is the form of a fang wolf. Gladly rip that spine out! That was close! The four knights couldn't do anything against the demon and thus, Flyo sent them back to Clyrode with his teleportation. He attacked the demon with gravitation magic and crushed her onto the ground. He kept rejecting the proposal of his magic system to use subjugation magic on the demon 
because he remembered how demons were treated in his previous world. The demon turned into her demi-human form since all her magic was used up, and Fleo proposed to her that if she would refrain from attacking humans, starting from that point onwards, he wouldn't mind her sticking to him. Thus the demon, who turned out to be called Fenris, humbly accepted his offer and also declared him her master. Fenris fell asleep since her magical points were running low, so he dressed her wounds and placed her in a tent. He talked to her about his mastery over her when she woke up. She consented when he wanted to be his wife solely in name rather than as her master. Following their conversation, he told her he was from another planet and even revealed his actual nature to her. One week later, the two of them went to Clyroad and he registered Fenris in the Adventurer's Guild under the name Rise. After accepting an emergency quest to subjugate a horde of psycho bears that appeared in the northern forest, the two of them went to buy new equipment. Even though other adventurers made jokes about them accepting the quest, he ignored them and bought a ring for Rise. It is a magical ring which boosts the speed and defense stats. He put the ring on her left hand finger and stated that this is proof of marriage in human culture. He also has the same ring on one of his fingers. He teleported and rise to the northern forest where the psycho bears are. They found the four female knights surrounded by a horde of psycho bears. Fleo killed most of the psycho bears with one hit of his lightning magic skill. The four knights were very surprised after seeing Fleo again. The only bear who was left alive behaved like a pet after feeling the immense power of Rise. Due to this, he decided to make the bear their new pet, since Rice was the one who made this proposal. He used obedience on him to suppress sudden rages, and he turned him into a unicorn rabbit using shapeshift. He called their new pet Saib. After that, the four knights introduced themselves as Bali Rasa, Blossom, Balano, and Bailari. They asked him if he could join forces with them, but Fleo declined since he was traveling together with his wife, Rice. But since Rise was so exited that he called her his wife in front of others, she said that he could help them out, and thus he accepted to become the instructor-teacher of the Four Knights.